KCRW sponsors include A24, presenting Moonlight, a film chronicling three chapters in the life of a young black man, discovering his identity and experiencing first love as he moves from childhood into manhood. In theaters now. Hi, I'm Elvis Mitchell, and thanks for listening to The Treatment. Some of the most entertaining stories produced today, however, are not on the big screen, but they can be heard on KCRW's Unfictional, intimate stories and artful documentaries crafted by some of the most talented radio producers across the world. Check it out. You can find Unfictional on KCRW's iTunes page. From KCRW Santa Monica and KCRW.com, it's The Treatment. Welcome to The Treatment. I'm Elvis Mitchell. I am pleased to be joined by a man who is legitimately a star of stage, screen, and television, Billy Crystal. Billy, good to have you here. Pleasure to be here, Elvis. And he's starring in a new show on FX, The Comedians, one of the show's exec producers. Ben Wexler is also here. Ben, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And one of the things I want to say to you, Ben, before we really get going into this, is that you worked on another show in some ways that was similar to this, The Good Guys, which is about a generation gap between kind of an old school guy and a younger guy, and a right. guy who's kind of like in love with his persona. Yeah. It's Bradley Whitford doing Burt Reynolds. <laughs> doing, yeah. And, yeah, right. and, and Colin Hanks with is his younger wit- partner. And, and yeah. we had to pay the mustache, I think, for that episode. <laughs> It was amazing, yeah. <laughs> but it just feels like that's one of the things that kind of interests you, must have interested you about the show a little bit, that idea of that generation gap. Well, we we got sent this show from Sweden called uh, Herngren and Ulvesen, I think it was. And, we, you know, we, uh, I, Billy and I didn't know each other at the time. We each got sent this show separately. But the show itself um, was what, uh, at least speaking for myself, that's what attracted me to this project. It was just hilarious on its own uh, uh, on its own merits. But it sounds uh, like a kind of a Bergman-esque comedy. Oh, well, it's, it, yeah, I mean... And not the, Ingrid either. At the, not, <laughs> not, unfortunately, not Ingrid. We kept looking for her. But, you know, it really is at the, at the center of it. It is a, a generational uh, comedy. And, uh, you know, both of those things, I think that's probably more of a coincidence than anything else, that the fact that both of those shows happen to have those uh, those those generational divides. But this is this show is sort of the hopefully laugh out loud version of that show because you know the the sort of the minute that the producer who sent me the project said you know the next step is to sit down and meet billy crystal i i jumped at the chance because he's been a hero and a, an idol of mine for years since well, i was a kid well, what was go. that first meeting like, what, what did you guys talk about <laughs> in that it. first meeting for the for the show um well ben flattered me for about 20 minutes of doing um my routines from an album i did in 1986 <laughs> it just seemed like 20 minutes <laughs> yeah um but it was uh, and and um totally professional and at that point larry charles was also circling the project as a director producer and so the combination seemed like perfect and so the meeting was just like we all knew what kind of show we wanted to make and we all saw the funny in it the same way and saw the heart in the same way because at its core is is a terrific premise this veteran comedian teamed forcibly basically (laughs) um with this younger edgy guy to make a a show my only question was you know who's going to play the older guy (laughs) and um so then i just said well george burns wasn't available yeah and groucho's dead so (laughs) there we go (laughs) no it was it was um right from the beginning we all saw the thing the same way because one of the things that I find really interesting about you, too, is I think about you in terms of chemistry. I mean, Gregory Hines and Running Scared, mm-hmm. De Niro and the Analyzed movies that you did, you and Danny DeVito and Throw Mama from the Train, City Slickers, uh, When Harry Met Sally. That chemistry is a really important thing for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, I, I, you named some really great ones. Um, and I was fortunate to be teamed with really wonderful um partner, I guess you call them, who um, sees things the same way. And that way, for me, I, I, get to, I get to be very unselfish that way. I can do, I, you trust them. You let them have their thing. They, they know you. And so it, 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 just, it just fits, you know, um, Magic Johnson won championships because he passed the ball a lot. So I've been, you know, Gregory I loved, and that was like my first partner it's like my first big movie and it's just a it's a it's a thing that's very delicate and and you don't know if you're going to have it or not and i've been so knocked out with you know from the first time we met josh in a meeting josh gag we're talking about that 
he sits down and it's and we start bantering and then everybody he also flattered else, you as I recall when he sat down. Which, he did the helped. second. He did the B side yeah, of the album. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you go well wait this guy's got it he we we could really be good together and in fact that's 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 really what what happened. But at some point, you've got to trust your antennae on this, I mean, because you're so good at that. And I almost think of it as being kind of a consequence of being a guy who trained as a baseball player, but also some guy with a, with a background in jazz. At a certain point, you learn how to feel when the, you have the right partner, don't you? Yeah, and I just instinctively, when, when Josh left the meeting, which was supposed to be a half hour, <laughs> it was three hours. And when he left, I think I said to Ben, I said, I think we just we already offered him a job because we're talking about costumes and wigs. <laughs> so we're pretty along in the process already. But it's that you sort of know, OK, he's uh, it, it's him. But at what point for you did you get this sense that you were that good at sort of finding out who was a good partner for you? Because, again, I do think of you as some terms of chemistry. That's really important for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I no one can carry anything alone. And you know you need you need someone with a you know whether it be an actress or an actor or whoever your partner is also in life that has got to be the right fit. So I just sort of get it. Was it was it an early thing for you? I'm just curious because it, I, even even with you and John Goodman and Monsters Inc. I mean, it's so many times when I think about you, I think about you in terms of your generosity and that sort of thing that demands that you be present for another actor. And, and so many people come from comedy aren't built that way. And they're built on upstaging and, and not being there and listening to the other performer. Right. That's, is that just part of your makeup? Or is I that think it's part of my makeup. I think it's, I just, uh, I don't know any other way to get it done. I mean, when I'm alone on stage uh, doing a stand-up or my show, then that's my time to be alone. But actually, I, even in the show, I have partners because I play all these other people. <laughs> so, exactly. um, yeah, it's interesting. I just I think it's interesting too, and I was just wondering for you, Ben, that idea of sort of creating chemistry had to be a big part of this. Because I, I have to say, I don't I don't know the original show it's based on. Right. So. Yeah, I don't think you can create the kind of chemistry that Billy and Josh have. I, you 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 sit on stage on set and you watch the two of them acting together, and the way they listen to you. You know, you mentioned the way they listen to each other is is really something to see. Uh, I remember in the pilot. There's a scene that takes place at the grill, and you guys are having dinner together for the first time. And it's kind of a Josh-heavy scene because he's sort of he's, – he's ordering a million things from the waiter, and it's really about Josh. And Billy's just kind of sitting back and just watching it all happen. And I remember thinking, you know, it's too bad we didn't get more for Billy to say in that scene. And then we got back to the editing room, and we edited it, and – in my opinion, you're the whole scene. Just watching, watching you. Wa I killed him. It, it was really, it was <laughs> really funny because it's just like he's doing these little, frankly, these little movie star things that are, um, <laughs> you know, that with his eyes and with his face that are so subtle. Um, and all he's doing is listening and watching this guy and watching him dig a hole for himself. And it's really funny. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a genuine two-hander scene. And we've had, we have examples. Where Josh is doing the same thing with Billy, sure. and they're they're just they're both great listeners, and I don't know, I don't think I could have created that. I think that comes from the performers. And really. it, for me, it it comes from years and years and years, starting as a kid, watching Laurel and Hardy, watching Burns and Allen. Laurel and Hardy, two guys so infamous for kind of not liking each other. Yeah, and and, and 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 just think about you know Oliver Hardy listening to the absurdity of whatever Stan was saying, or the crying. Or how he got Oliver hurt, you know, stepped on the, the mop and the mop hit him in the head, you know, and Ollie was always the recipient of everything. And he would just quietly just look in the camera and just tell us, can you believe what I'm living with? And and so I, I you glean that stuff. You you watch that stuff. I watch, you know, I knew George Burns pretty well towards the end of his life, and yeah. it was a thrill. And I asked him what it was like with Gracie because that's one of the greatest teams of all time. And if anyone Gracie wants Allen, to watch yeah. comedy, watch uh, – go on YouTube or wherever they have it and watch the early Burns and Allen shows. It's so ahead of its time. Right he's down to him talking to the camera. Yeah, he, and he's in the attic of his house watching the show on a television and then commenting on the show. I mean it's crazy. Harry Von Zell doesn't know that I know what's going on. <laughs> you know, it's like – it's so – but he told me, he said – you know, it was easy with Gracie. I would say, how's your brother? 
and then she'd speak for 20 minutes, and I'd just point to her. I got to a point where I could actually point with both hands. And so that's, you know, I, I, you learn that. It's the treatment. My guests are Billy Crystal, who's one of the stars of the new FX show, The Comedians, which is on FX Thursdays at 10, and Ben Wexler, one of the show's executive producers. Let me ask you, too, about the original show that it's based on, because was there such a difference in energies between the two performers? Or because that's really one of the things that's kind of different, too, that Josh kind of rolls in and he's kind of all id and just wants to consume everything and be the center of attention. And for you, it really it's almost like you're doing George Burns, Billy. I mean, you're kind of waiting a lot. Yeah, Was that- yeah which I like because it, it makes the show awkward in a good way. And we get so much mileage and laughs out of me not saying too much at, at times and being impatient with him and just – being patient at the same time I'm being impatient with him. But, you know, we have a very relaxed set. And Larry Charles is a big part of that as a director. And everyone's influenced. We, we don't get on this, onto the set because we've all worked uh, until we know we're ready. And all the words have been worked out and all the moments have been worked out with, with Josh and I and Ben and, and, and then Larry. I come onto the set and we start rolling. But there's very little rehearsal. Where do I stand? What do you want me? And the stuff I would never do in a feature unless I'm, you know, just totally in trusting the director. I always want to, what am I doing? Where am I? Where did I come? I know where we are. I know what we're doing. And um, occasionally I'll go and, and say, remind me, because we were shooting two episodes at the same time. And I'll go to Ben and say, what, did I come from, did I say this? Okay, I got it. And then I know what to do. But, and it's just very natural. So we'll, we'll start shooting right away because there is no film anymore. There's no, you know, there's no, hey, there's a hair in a microchip. There's, there's none. So you just, you just start going. And we keep finding as we go. And we keep building on it or subtracting. And then that's what makes the scenes work. And as an actor in it, it's incredibly freeing because you can try all these different kinds of things. But I, I want to, let me ask you this too, Ben, because I'm wondering again about the energy in the original show because this is really about these two different kinds of energy clashing in, in addition to these right. two really kind of self-absorbed guys. And was that a part of the original series as well? The, or is the original somewhat... series, I think, was a little more mean-spirited than, than ours. And more one note than we yeah, yeah, and and it was also a little more dry. I think we had to kind of decide what our dynamic was going to be and create it sort of of whole cloth. Uh, you know, the thing that... Oh, that truly makes me laugh about watching Billy and Josh together is Josh has this energy where it feels like something might go out of control at any moment. He's got, to, he's just yeah. got this, you know, you, you described it as id. He's, he kind of is, he's all id. And he, he has this energy where he's constantly touching Billy's face, which Billy clearly <laughs> hates and just, you know, making, making jokes about oral sex, which Billy clearly hates, but you also, know, and the, but also just invading his space, getting yeah, too close exactly. to him all the time, all the time. And there's a, there's something very funny about a guy who's basically under control, having to deal with a guy who's always on the edge of, of losing control. And that, that that's a lot of our, I can get a lot of mileage out of being un- uncomfortable especially with him he touches my face he likes to hug and some wonderful moments and accidents just happened from right from the pilot where he wants to hug me and i just i just didn't want to i just have to do something like that and it's, was that just something that came out of you guys just yeah, being room together? yeah yeah that really feels like it's a lot of the kind of that, that idea of the kind of you inhabiting these two very different kinds of physical persona mm-hmm is that something too that's specific to this show as compared to the, oh, yeah. the other show? The, the Swedish show, the one's much taller. The younger guy's much taller and the other guy's thin. They really look alike, blah, actually. Yeah. They're all blonde. Well, it's Sweden. It's, yeah, there's not that much uh, casting. And we, have, again, Elvis, we watched the show in Swedish with subtitles and it was still funny. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I mean, the only thing I have in common with Sweden is herring. Basically, <laughs> and, <laughs> but they're, they're they shot so, it in the summer, so it was all day. It yeah. was just all yeah. They're never, and they're just very nasty to each other. But, it, but it's it, funny. It, it's really funny. It's just all about – that show's more about ego than our show is. Yeah. And as the season progresses, you know, we had to create an arc for our show for the 13 episodes that we, that we have. So our arc is, you know, the, the making of the show, but yet we're heading towards we don't have an air date. Are we going to be actually on the air? And it starts to get very interesting and more focused and a little bit more desperate as what's going to happen to us. And it gets, at times, gets very pointed between the two of us, which I think, as the series unravels, will become really provocative for the audience. See, because we, we decided... You become provocative? It starts... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's even more. It's yeah. even more. Because we, we, we're playing ourselves. We're playing these versions of ourselves, which was a big discussion um, in the beginning once we were committed. And Josh was with us. And we said, well, what, who's, what do we do? And 
And it was basically, you know, Larry and Ben saying, are you willing to do this? Because if you do that, boy, that just opens us up to yeah. all kinds of stuff. And I said, yeah, but it opens me up to, you know, a different interpretation of the audience of, of me, what they think they know of me. And then I went, you know what, that's kind of great. That's really good. Because then, then it's twists and turns, and then the audience doesn't know, well, why did he say that to Billy? And then they go, wait, why did Billy say that to him? Then, it, then it's, it's fodder for a little, a little controversy, and, and um, it makes it really interesting for people. It gives the show more teeth. We're going to take a break and go off and listen to one of Billy Crystal's albums. It's the treatment, my guest, Billy Crystal, who's in the stars of the comedian and executive producer, Ben Wexler. There's more to come. Stay with us. KCRW's popular iPad Music Mine app is now available for the iPhone. From quick discovery to deep exploration, take KCRW Music with you wherever you go. Download at kcrw.com slash musicmine. Welcome back. It's the treatment. It's still fishy with, <laughs> with Billy Crystal, one of the stars of the new FX series, The Comedians, and Ben Wexler, who's on the show's executive producers. One of the things I want to ask you, Billy, is that you've so often played guys who are really confident and almost like deluded in their confidence mm-hmm. about themselves. Mm-hmm. And to play a guy who's really kind of anxious and a bit more sort of reticent is an interesting turn for you. Yeah. You know, I've also been that in parts of my life, too. So right in the opening of the pilot, I get beat up a little bit. You know, my show that I so love, the Billy and Billy show where I play every character, doesn't test well, but I test well. And then, then I don't have my dream and I got to work with this guy who I've only seen and I don't know and it feels like a step backwards. And as I said to Mel Brooks in one of the episodes, I never had a partner before. This is so, uh, you know, and it's okay. He's all right. But suddenly it's it's a different me at a different point in my life. And so – But also kind of, again, an antithetical given – Again, because I think of you as being a guy who plays so well with other people that you're playing this almost nightmare version of yourself in some ways. Well, I don't, th- I don't think it's a nightmare, but it's someone who's not as not in as much control as he has been at different times in his career. And it's a different point in his career. And I think that to me was, you know, honest. And that to me was really refreshing to do, to say to them, oh, I'm good with that. I'll say that. I won't say this, but I'll say that. <laughs> and then you'd get a script and you go, now, wait a second. <laughs> Who wrote this? Is this how they really feel about me? And so it's, um, to me, it's, it's, you know, it's brave. Well, one thing I think is kind of brave about this show, too, and let me ask you about this, Ben, is there's so much surreal in the costumes and the sets. I mean, it, it feels in a weird way almost like a, a lot of Marx Brothers stuff. There's this kind of visual odd points where they're in these strange costumes. Yeah, Yeah, sometimes they have to have really serious conversations while they're dressed up as Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara. You know, it's (laughs) and and there's a certain kind of comedic counterpoint to to all of it. It, I mean, I think it really is steeped in a reality. They happen to be working on a sketch show. So if you were working on a sketch show, you would be sometimes in a banana costume. It just just happens. But, um, But going back to something Billy said, I think it really is a an additionally brave acting job on both of their parts that they're playing versions of themselves. And and we do, in the second half of the season, kind of take it to a deeper... It, I mean, it, it starts to become, I think, less about the making of the show and more about who are we going to be as people and friends and you know what's our relationship going to look like. And it's kind of a meditation on... Uh, what it is to try to have a career and to to stay relevant in especially in our business, but hopefully it it resonates beyond just Hollywood. And you know they wear hilarious costumes. So uh, <laughs> you know uh, Billy Billy in a uh, in an antebellum dress is really something to see. I have to say, one it was comfortable, gorgeous. Two, <laughs> it was a good look for you. <laughs> I looked a lot like Vivian Lee. Yeah, I actually did. Well, my guest was clearly never seen Gone with the Wind is Billy Crystal, one of the stars of the comedians <laughs> here with Ben Wexler, who's the show's exec producer. It's the treatment. But one of the th- shows I really liked, I guess maybe the third episode, when you guys are in the grocery store. Yes. And you're high. And that, yeah. that really sort of about, in this weird way, kind of makes you guys a team. Yeah. Because these boundaries kind of fall away. Yes. Talk about that episode a little bit, if you guys would. It was, first of all, it was a really fun one to write. It came out of a, a, a real moment where Josh and I were both nominated for these animated voiceover awards called the Annies. He was up for Frozen, which uh, he won, and I was nominated for Monster University. University. And when it, when it came, I said, we're both, I said, this is an episode. So all we right. started writing it. So I said, well, what's the complication? And then we talked about, all right, I go to pick him up, and he's stoned with his friend who's hilarious. And I said, I'll, all right, I'll be high. Let's go. And then so we went out to the valley, 
I, what time were we in? It was like 120 degrees. I have no idea what it was. It was so hot, but I, it was like Van Nuys or something. Some like that. and yeah. some a functioning uh, supermarket that didn't close for, didn't our, close. for us for our shooting. Really? Yeah. yeah. There were actual customers, some of whom appear in the in That's the right. show, including so, the old guy who you, the old guy. Yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, oh. oh yeah. That was just a guy <laughs> shopping. So um, I got out there about an hour early just to walk around and get a feel of the place and see what was there and just look for, well, what could I do here? Could I make up something? And I just looked at something and I saw some stuff and then Josh came and then I'm telling you, we get dressed and it's like, go. And where, you, where do you think you're going to be? Where do you, you know, I said, well, I could be here. I could be here. I got a little thing, maybe that. And, and we just started improvising. It's all improvised except for one little beat. Um, well, we're um, sitting on the on the floor, eating huh. eating ice cream ice cream with uh, ladles that still had price tags. <laughs> and um, he says, "Would well, you really care about this award?" And I give him a little bit of advice. That, you know, here I am, my mid sixties, saying, "Yeah, you do care. You have to care. I don't know how do you not care, even just for like a kids' critics award." You, you always got to care. Now, by the way, kids' critics award was was the award you guys were talking about on the, and, in the episode and. He looks at me for the longest beat and just says, I'm scared of you. And I look back and I took as long a beat as I possibly could and said, I get that. And then we just started laughing. It was one of those 1968 laughs when you're in your dorm and you're high on the, you know, some, some good weed and you just can't stop laughing. And it was just like a real bonding, silly moment that Josh got Grandpa stoned. <laughs> and people loved it. Yeah. The Twitter world, the everyone, you know, loved that we were, you know, stoned and, you know, that Grandpa Billy got high in a supermarket. But, and I would, I, if I may, that, sure. that's, a, that's a moment that we, I feel like we can only do on our show because it is actually specific to the fact that Billy is playing Billy Crystal and Josh is playing Josh Gad. And in that, there was a, there was a truth to writing that moment in a way where it's just like – the, the truth of it is we are we are a little scared of you. I'm telling you this now <laughs> live on the air so that, you know, so that you can't be mad. But, like, you know, it, it, there, there is a – there. It, this is a guy who we all kind of want to impress. And, you know, the, and we had to kind of go to our, our, our truest little inner, inner fear there. And, and it, it really turned out so, so great. It's the treatment. You can feel the fear in the feel, room, feel I the guess. Fear. Billy Crystal. <laughs> feel the fear. <laughs> One of the stars that's, of the comedians. Our, you get a season Billy two. It's comedians feel back. the fear. I can see you, my sweat's going down the back of my neck. And also, <laughs> Ben Wexler is one of the show's executive producers. One of the things that feels like it's key to this is that this show couldn't just be comedians. It has to be trained actors. And you trained as an actor, and Josh too. And I think that's, for me, a big part of what makes the show work. But let me ask you this, Ben. Was that important for you guys as you putting the show together to make sure you had people who were not just – comics but actors as well because this is a show about skilled acting as much or actors as anything else absolutely yeah. I, I, you know the, the good thing about our show and I, I i think these guys are able to go to set as billy said with the confidence that we have the scene before we show up because everything is on paper we we table read every episode so we hear we hear the script before we go and shoot it so we we, we know that we have the baseline of an episode that hangs together and is funny and, and, and hits the beats that we want to hit. But yeah, every when we go to set and do the scene, this is the first show I've ever worked on where I never take the, the script out of my pocket and look at it. I'm just watching for whether we have a scene or not. And I would say 90% of the time, we get a version of the scripted scene. We don't always use it, but we get it. And 10% of the time, something happens after you, Larry was supposed to say cut and he didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, Stephanie's stomach grumbles. And then suddenly the scene is about this new thing that none of us predicted. But nobody's dear about what's on, on the page. It's just, is this funny? Is this, does this feel true to us? Did they hit the parts of the scene that we want to ha have hit? So, yeah, I absolutely knew, knew that there would be a ton of improv. And we happen to have five actors who can carry that. Um, and and it's, it's very lucky. It makes, it makes me look funnier as a writer, to be honest, because so many great jokes just come out of the moments that these guys play together. And, and then we have another level of comedy, which are the sketches, both filmed and live, that roll into the show. So for me, when I decided to do it, I, I saw, all right, I'm not just going to play this guy. I get to play characters. I get to create new characters. I get to work in funny makeups, which I love to do. I get to do in front of a live audience. And so then you really – it's for the someone watching the show, it's great because – oh, the, the great little sorbets in the show, the little palate cleansers, you know, and they help us with transitions 
you know, because we don't sometimes don't have any. So suddenly there's a sketch, yeah. <laughs> and there's a, you know, so, but it's a it's a whole other level of comedy that's so much fun to write and to and to perform. Because at some point in watching the sketches, I almost think I want to see an episode of that show with just those sketches. You'll see one uh, that has a lot more, but yeah. yeah, it's it's we have the luxury of not having to end the sketches. So if we if we have, <laughs> you know, hence the funny co- <laughs> funny costumes. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Or or even just a remnant. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, you, you guys run lines for maybe a minute that yeah. you know in a sketch that never would actually exist about you know you're playing this this Civil War woman, but you know it, we get to do the funniest part of the sketch, which actually makes the job a lot easier too, because you you kind of get to do the highlight and go away if you want to, and uh, sometimes you'll come back to the same sketch two or three times during the course of a show. But there's a huge degree of difficulty in the production of making this sketch show while we're also making this half hour television show. There, you know, we're we're doing all this at the same time in a four day schedule, so it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of work for these guys getting in and out of. The, the makeup and the costumes and all the yeah. stuff that you would do. But it's fun. But it's great. But the, but the sketches have to be funny. That's the pressure of the sketches. They have to be funny. You have to believe them. You have to yeah, believe these you have guys to believe are the that sketch the show's going to work and that they're good together. And especially because I'm playing myself, I feel the pressure of being really funny in those sketches. I can't, would never do anything that's not good. Unfortunately, I have. But <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? You don't set out to do something lousy. Sure. You know, I have a, there's a, for myself, and I think for fans of mine, there's an expectation I'm going to be in something that's going to be funny. So it's not just the show, it's these little sketches, too. Which also becomes a, a kind of an odd pressure because you're saying you're playing a version of yourself or what people perceive to be you. Yeah. And you have people who've been fans of you like me for a long time. It's got to be interesting to play around with that idea of people's perception of you versus what you want to play in this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's tricky. Almost more so with the sketches than it is with the the actual behavior of stuff I have to do. Because the sketches have to pay off and yeah. people have to believe that you still have the chops. Yeah. yeah. Was that a worry for you guys, making sure those sketches would have oh, some kind of comic impact? Yeah, a lot of work goes into that. I mean, you, you know, there's a show called 30 Rock that already did that joke fantastically well of a, the making of a sketch show that wasn't, that was dumb. You know I mean? That's right. where the sketches were supposed to be not funny. So we, we knew that we couldn't out 30 Rock, 30 Rock. That joke had been done and, and in our show, they do. They have to feel like they're actually good. So we wrote, we probably wrote hundreds of sketches to, yeah. for the for the twenty or thirty that wound up in the show, and you know it's a it's a huge amount of work. But as you say, as Billy says, that's it, it. It wouldn't work if they're not funny. You know, hopefully people actually think they're funny because you know we have egg on our face if they don't. But it's you know it, it is. It's there are these little interstitial moments where it cuts. Sometimes it cuts the treacle of of what's happening, or it cuts the drama of what's happening, and it, it gives us these big sort of bonus laughs. And. You mentioned that, the, the drama and sometimes the sentimentality. But we can go Ed Sullivan here. These are a lot of plates to spin, aren't they? They are. That, but that's why I love the show, and I, that's why I wanted to do it. Because, you know, I, I kept getting sent, I'm the grandfather can't figure out his iPhone. I'm the, I'm the you know, the kids come back to stay at my house. And it's like, oh, no, no. But then you get a piece of material that allows you to do what you do and to help you get better. At this point, that's all I just want to keep doing, which I end up saying in one of the episodes, I just want a chance to keep doing it and keep getting better. And I loved being challenged that way. And I, you know, I really loved the experience of, of making the show. And, and week in, week out now, as more people are watching it and catching on to it and, and starting to become a little, you know, something for people, it's, uh, it's very satisfying. And we're out of time. I can't thank you guys enough. Please come back and do the show again. Elvis is on the show, folks. Yes, if you're lucky, you'll avoid Orange You, the new black guy. He's it's, really me, funny. Yeah. Let me thank my guests before they go on too much about this. Uh, Billy Crystal is one of the stars of FX's new show, The Comedians. Billy, thanks so much. Thank you, Elvis. And Ben Wexler, one of the show's exec producers. Ben, thank you. Thank you. Recording engineer at NPR is Theo Mondo. The show is mixed by Melissa Morton. Edited and produced by Jenny Radelip. But all this talk of eggs, meat, and sorbet, I'm starving. It's the treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get lunch. catch up on past episodes with the treatment, go to kcrw.com or listen on your smartphone with KCRW's mobile apps or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or if you listen to podcasts. The treatment is produced and distributed by KCRW Santa Monica. That don't